the use of the money at subrecipients. Great. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Miller, uh, will the Department proactively review the uh, state subrecipient monitoring plans and will they audit uh, any of the states to determine whether or not those plans are uh, accurate or flawed? Uh, as part of our uh, guidance, we'll be working with OMB to develop the, the final guidance. We, we, even in this period, we had 25 staff working during the review process, reaching out to all 50, st all 50 states to understand, to help one convey the guidance and understand any issues. Um, so we'll continue to build on that effort to the degree that subrecipient issues have been identified. We'll continue to, to work with them to resolve the subrecipient reporting issues as well. Thank you. Mr. Bakari, how has uh, transportation been monitoring the subrecipients of the act? Uh, Congressman, we've been directly working with the recipients and in turn uh, asking them uh, to make sure their subrecipient data is correct. We're relying on the recipients uh, to uh, have correct data from their subrecipients. Uh, and Chairman Devaney, do you find that the uh, lack of resources for the states has impacted their ability to report on the subrecipients, uh, their inability to have the inspectors generals or other uh, auditing facilities? Uh, sir, I think it creates an enormous challenge for states. And uh, I'll give you the example. I went out to Colorado when they were reporting and I walked by a football-sized field of uh, empty cubicles. They had literally laid off uh, a good part of their staff. They were facing a furlough the next week and they had to report in three days. So, uh, and they had regular state work as well. So it, there are challenges out there. States are hurting. And, uh, and there's no doubt that they made a Herculean effort to try and, and report on time. And that's why I felt uh, a grace period for late reporters was, was, uh, was appropriate in this first reporting uh, cycle and, and maybe another, because I think they're doing their best. Uh, but uh, th there's enormous money monetary challenges out there. Thank you. Mr. Dodoro, yes. Yeah, uh, Congressman Tierney, uh, we've been uh, very concerned about the ability of the states and the auditors to oversee the f funding. Uh, we've raised that issue in our earlier reports on the, on the bimonthly uh, reviews of the use of the money. A number of states are under fiscal stress. They've been cutting back in uh, some of these administrative areas. We've recommended that the Congress uh, allow certain percentage of the money to be used for administrative oversight and uh, auditing. Uh, of those funds. We think it would be a prudent investment uh, given the size of this whole endeavor. Uh, and I know this committee had passed legislation, it's passed the House, but it's, uh, it's pending in the Senate right now. What a shock to all of us that the Senate hasn't acted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a shock. Uh, Congressman Burton, Minneana. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, President Obama brushed off criticism over his administration's inaccurate reporting on job creation Wednesday, telling Fox News the accounting is an inexact science and that any errors are a side issue when compared with the goal of turning the economy around. He said job growth is his number one responsibility. I think he said something like that back in January. And let's just look at what happened since January. You want to put that slide up? Jobs that they claim to have been saved or created, 640,329, and there are 15.7 million Americans unemployed. He said he would create 3.5 million jobs, and instead we've lost 3.8 million jobs. That's a difference of 7.3 million jobs, and yet this is a side issue. It's not a big deal. Uh, we have spent we have authorized $787 billion, and you say you spent $173 billion. I, I don't know what you've done with the rest of that money, but if it's available and it's supposed to stimulate job creation, why in the heck haven't you been doing it? It makes no sense to me. I mean, we are suffering one of the biggest recessions in the history of this country, and you're telling me out of the, seven, out of the $787 billion, you only spent $173 billion. I just don't understand. And now, and now the administration's talking about another stimulus. Now, if you take the $787 billion and you've only spent $173 billion, why do you need another stimulus? I, I, this just doesn't make any sense. And then you read that, uh, let me get my glasses here because my eyes aren't as strong as they used to be. Now you have Peter Orzog at the White House saying that uh, the federal government made $98 billion in improper payments 
including fraud, abuse, and everything else, and they can't uh, document where that money went. And this administration has been an absolute disaster as far as the economy is concerned. And now they're coming up with some more uh, minor things that they want to do, like change the health care system and add another one to three trillion dollars to the deficit. The deficit this year is 1.4 trillion, and we're still in the current fiscal year. That's over three times what it was last year when my Democrat colleagues were raising cane about it. It was 500 billion. They've, they've really, they really outdone themselves. The White House has now got it up to 1.4 trillion this year, and we still have 10.2 percent unemployed and it's probably going to go up. And you can't document the 640,329 jobs you're talking about. I, I, I feel like I'm listening to a baloney factory here because people come down from the White House and they give us these figures and they can't document the figures and it just goes on and on and on. And then the president has the unmitigated gall to say job growth is his number one responsibility. Where has he been the last 11 months? He said that was the first thing he wanted to do was create jobs in this country. And he said he was going to create three and a half million new jobs. Instead, we lost 3.8 million. And we've got over 15 million people out of work. Unemployment's at 10.2 percent. I've said that before, but I'll say it again. This, this whole issue is just propaganda. It's political hyperbole. He's one of the most eloquent presidents I've ever seen in my life, I've ever heard in my life. But the fact of the matter is, all he does is campaign, and as far as getting results to help this economy, he's doing almost zero, pretty doggone close to it. And I think it's, 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 it's just disgusting to me that the American people are being told, you know, that these jobs are being saved or created, and that we're got jobs is number one. It's just, it, it's just not so. You can't even document these jobs. 640,000 jobs? H how do you say a job's saved? So somebody just say, how do you prove that a job's been saved? How do you prove that a job's been created when unemployment's now 10.2 percent? So anybody? Well, I think in the case of education, since that represents a significant portion of the total jobs reported, I think we are confident. There are many, many stories that well preceded the reporting period of layoff notices that were rescinded. Well, uh, I've been out talking, again, outside of this reporting contest, Ms. Cho, a fourth grade teacher in Los Angeles. So many teachers who I've met with directly who said, thank God for the stimulus package because Mr. it, in Devaney, fact, allowed me, me to interrupt. save jobs. Mr. Devaney, can, can you audit uh, uh, these jobs that have been created or saved? We're not in a position to audit them, no. So you can't audit it? The, the, the jobs that we're reporting came directly from the recipients of the recovery monies because that's the, what the Act said had to happen. But as far as auditing them, be able to document them, it's, it's not really possible. Well, the, it, it's, it is the responsibility of the agencies to ensure that the accuracy of those, those recipient reports, and, and that's what's happening. It's going to take time to, to get that accuracy. Told, I, I, I know I'm finished, Mr. Chairman. Well, I, Mr. Issa asked you that question, and you said, you know, there's no way to really prove all these jobs being saved or, or created. I can understand the gentleman's frustration. Eight years of failed economic policy. I can uh, understand uh, your frustration. Uh, you can't uh, take I now that yield. Forever, Mr. I, I, <laughs> I yield to the. <laughs> who's next? Huh? Who's next? Uh, Comes from Van Hollen, Maryland. You have five minutes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, people are entitled to their own opinions, but they're not entitled to their own facts. So I think it's important to put this in a little bit of context. Uh, when President Obama was sworn in uh, back in January, this economy was in total freefall. It was in collapse. We were in a rate of G GDP 6.5 negative growth. Uh, in that first quarter in January, we saw 700,000 Americans a month losing their job. This past quarter, GDP, GDP growth 3.5 percent plus, and while it's unacceptable that people are continuing to lose their jobs, it dropped from around 700,000 a month to under 200,000 a month. So let's keep this in context. The fact of the matter is that the economic recovery plan is working. Uh, now, Mr. Dodaro, let me just ask you a couple questions 
uh, with respect to the expenditures. Uh, as my colleagues have said, the recovery plan had $787 billion, uh, but as of today, $173 billion has actually been expended. Is that correct? Uh, as of September 30th. As uh, of that, September 30th. That, that is correct. Okay. And we picked that date because that was the reporting period for these right. first set of And reports. I know my colleagues, apparently from their testimony, would like to rush all $780 billion into the economic bloodstream immediately, but I think uh, you would agree, would you not, that that would likely cause a lot of waste in the process? Well, that definitely was a concern in the early stages, and I might uh, say, in terms of the CBO estimates of the stimulus bill before it was passed by the Congress, it was clear that the amount of money would be spent out over several years. That was planned, was it not? Yes, that's Thank correct. You. And as you pointed out, of the 173 that's been spent so far, the part that is the subject of your review and the reporting uh, represented just $47 billion of that. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, are you a, do you have an economics background? No, but I have plenty of economics right. at GAO, right. economists. Uh, so let's put this in context. Right. There was also 6.3 in uh, what's called entitlement spending, for example, for unemployment compensation. Is that correct? That's correct. And would you agree that most economists say that by making sure people who are unemployed through no fault of their own have a little money to spend, that that also helps them go out and spend money in the economy and helps job creation? I think mo most economists would say that all three parts of the stimulus uh, uh, composition would create either direct or induced or indirect jobs. Correct. So when we're talking about 680,000 jobs with about 47 billion, we're actually undercounting the number of jobs that are created as a result of this expenditure. Isn't that correct? Well, there's no question that the recipient reports only entail a subset of the employment effects right. of the And based uh, on what you said, it would mean that since about two-thirds are expended elsewhere, Based on your experience and expertise, you would agree that there's been more jobs or sa saved or created as a result of those expenditures. Isn't that the case? Well, uh, what we have said in our report is that you need to look at the macroeconomic uh, estimates that have been made as a result of, of the expenditures in those areas, along with the recipient reports, to have a more complete picture. Right. Well, okay. It, l let me just read from your report because I think it's important to keep it in, in uh, perspective. You said that this reporting mechanism, which is unprecedented in its transparency and accountability, represents a, quote, solid first step in moving toward more transparency and accountability. Isn't that right? That's correct. Have you seen, ever seen any kind of transparency data collection effort on, of this magnitude in the United not, States? Not on a national scale like this, and, I, and that's why we said what we did because it's national in scope and it was in a relatively limited time frame given the uh, size of, of its uh, charge. Right. And in addition to the direct jobs, and these are only supposed to be counting direct jobs right. as an economist or someone who's familiar with, uh, you know, what economists right. say, you would agree that there's also an indirect multiplier. Isn't that the tr correct? Uh, as we say in our report, they're indirect and induced. Uh, of course. And that would obviously right. add to the extent you have indirect jobs, that's on top of what's direct. Isn't that not the case? That is correct. Thank you. Mr. Picari, before you took your position as Deputy Secretary uh, at the Department of Transportation, you were the, the Secretary of Transportation in the State of Maryland. Isn't that right? That's correct. Okay. So you have seen the direct impact of the stimulus monies in the State of Maryland. Is that correct? Uh, that's absolutely true. I have a unique okay. perspective on this from the front lines, and I can tell you from first hand experience, Congressman, that uh, before the Recovery Act, while it was being considered and immediately after it, uh, you could actually see the impact. Uh, we had contractors that were laying people off. We met with uh, members of the contracting community, associations, laid out the time frame for what we expected uh, in the bill. Um, and ask them at the, at the time not to lay off people because the right. work was coming. Would, would you characterize a job and the ability to pay the rent as propaganda? No, a, jo a job is a job, and in this uh, industry right now, those jobs are very precious. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think it's uh, characterizing a, a, a real job and the ability to provide your family as propaganda is a disservice to the American people. Thank you. Thank you. I now yield five minutes to the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Mike. Well, thank you, and thank you for uh, holding this hearing uh, as uh, Deputy Secretary of Transportation. Uh, as, uh, in our committee, um, we, uh, we hold these uh, follow-up uh, hearings and oversight on transportation spending just about monthly, and we are trying to track uh, the money. We are trying to get the money out. 
appears to, to be some serious problems with the whole reporting system. Now, I was told that the reporting system, the software and all cost, uh, and I'm not sure about this, is it 73 or $84 million? Do you know Mr. Devaney or Mr. Dondero? Uh, the $84 million figure, sir, is, is, $84 the, million? is, is the budget for the board for two and a half years. So yeah, but that also, I mean, you're, you're, the board is one thing, but you have software that's been developed in a reporting system and people. Is that the whole cost? or? Uh, and no. then I've heard there's maybe $10 million that you've paid to sort of clean up the soft, uh, some of the software problems. The, the, uh, the board has cr uh, built two websites, one for reporting and one for displaying. And uh, the cost for those uh, so far is in the vicinity of 9 or $10 million. 9 to 10, so that, right. okay. Um, and you said that there are two couple, couple of problems, inaccurate data or non-compliance, those are the major problems. It's sort of like garbage in, garbage out. Uh, Mr. Dondero, you said that there were reporting, uh, there were 4,000 reports with no money uh, spent and accounting for 50,000 jobs. Is, that was one of the first things you led with? That, that's correct, uh, right. Congressman. So it's, yeah. Mr. Devaney, so if it's garbage in, it's, it's basically garbage reported out. Is that the way it's de devised? There's no qualitative uh, measure of what's coming in uh, done by you all, or well, is there? I, I, would, I would say, sir, that there are a lot of inaccuracies in this data, and the data was put in by recipients. But there are a lot of accuracies in the data as okay. well. Uh, there are well, probably the, the inaccuracies, though, is simple things like this isn't me or the Republican side. This is ABC News. They said in, uh, it was reported in Arizona's 15th congressional district, uh, 30 jobs have been saved or created with just $761,000 expenditure in federal stimulus money. The problem is there's no 15th uh, district. Now, we've got a multi-million dollar system to put the information in, and this is the kind of data that we're getting in, and we're not getting uh, correct information out. Is that's, how could this happen? It happened because a recipient put in the wrong district. And so that's the first part is in, oh, well, let's say you said inaccurate data, and the two, the two problems with the system were uh, inaccurate data, and what was the other one? Noncompliance. Right. Okay, the other one is that it was reported noncompliance. 10% um, of the recipients did not even report. Is that correct? Uh, we're trying to find that out, but it's well, no, probably wait. pretty close. I, I didn't make that up. I heard one of you all say 10% the recipients did not report. I think that uh, if I'm not wrong. That was in somebody's testimony. Yeah, I, 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 uh, Carson, did you like that? I, I said that that was OMB's estimate. And, okay. Uh, well, again, uh, would, would the gentleman just leave, leave real quickly, for a comment? But don't take much of my time because I'm just getting started. Guys. When did it become important for someone to know what congressional district they were in for reporting? Uh, was there a reason that you had to have congressional districts? Was that for propaganda purposes? Well, I'm not. I'm not going to uh, go into that right now. But let me take some other uh, sources here. Chicago Tribune. Garbage in, garbage out. More than 4.7, this is the story, more than 4.7 million in federal stimulus so far has been funneled into schools, Mr. Miller, in North Chicago, and state federal officials said that the money has saved 473 teachers' jobs. Somebody had to report that. The problem is the district only employs 290 uh, teachers. Did you report that? Uh, no, these would have been reports made by subrecipients to the states, and we, d we didn't have access to that information. Okay, you didn't have that, so that would have been a local district reporting. Reporting that? to the state, I think. Similarly, you had the largest Nobody school district in, Chicago, in, in Illinois, being Chicago, who reported zero jobs saved, and we would also question that. And so, part of our follow-up is to understand all but this. But did you count that as accurate. the 300,000 jobs saved by teachers? Any of this? Uh, 473 when the, uh, the entire district only employs 290? We counted roughly the, I believe it was the 18,000 jobs that's reported by the state of Illinois. Well, here's another one, this, this uh, radical rag, the Sacramento Bee. It says, um, 
up to one-fourth of the uh, 110,000 jobs reported as saved by the federal stimulus money in California probably never were in danger, a B review has found. The California State University officials reported last week that they saved more jobs with stimulus money than the number of jobs saved in Texas and 44 other states. Is this another garbage in, garbage out, Mr. Dondero, Mr. Devaney? In, in that case, there were different interpretations made on the calculation of the FTEs, and that needs to be addressed. As, and we've and recommended you did say that, that we have time, to have some de definition. Gentleman's yes. time has long expired. I have just one more quick one, Mr. Uh, Chairman, I, that, Gen if I, I may. Gentlemen, we have votes coming up, and I'm, you know, I don't. I'm, I know you want to get one more in. It's yeah, just about like, the. I, like job to sent to China, but we don't want well, to hear that. We, we, we can answer that in writing. So I'll hold yeah. that one for later. Thank uh, you. Uh, Congresswoman Marcy Capture. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All I have to say is I'm glad we have a Congress and uh, an administration that's focused on creating jobs. Uh, and uh, your data is helpful in um, assisting us in doing the best job we can possibly do for the American people. I wanted to ask you um, in the uh, transportation uh, area, um, with the $8 billion that was dedicated to the high-speed rail corridors, uh, it's my understanding that uh, it's been difficult for the Federal Railroad Administration to assume these new duties. And um, are there concerns within the Department about uh, your ability to move the dollars into the development of this important new infrastructure activity uh, that could, could truly help transform certainly the Great Lakes region and I'm sure other areas of the country. Uh, it, it's an excellent question. Uh, we are very focused on the $8 billion of high-speed rail money. We're currently reviewing the applications. We have multidisciplinary teams uh, that th uh, come from throughout the department, not just the Federal Railroad Administration. And we are straining a little bit uh, on this, but uh, we are confident uh, that uh, this uh, grant program and the high-speed rail program in general, uh, that we can accomplish those. Um, and we will be um, uh, working to uh, 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 build that program uh, over time. Uh, could I ask you when you anticipate making your uh, first awards, Mr. Porcari? We, we currently anticipate making those awards in January of 2010. All right. Uh, let me also, and I don't know, uh, Mr. Devaney or Mr. Dodaro, if you can answer this question. I come, if you look around the country, uh, some areas, census tracts have unemployment of over 55 percent. Uh, some districts have unemployment, as does ours, of 11.1 to 18 percent. Does your data lend itself to be able to see whether the targeting is accurate of the funds, because so much of this went through the states and the states are in the state capital and things happen with the money. Is there a way for us to interactively work with the data to assure that the areas that are hurting the most are getting some of the benefit? Is there any way to do that with the data sets being prepared? We do, we do in fact, uh, have a, um, what we call a heat map on the website that shows unemployment. And it also shows where the recipients have reported contracts, grants, and loans on that map. So we lay that on top of the unemployment uh, areas across the country by state, by county. And you can go in there and, and see if, uh, if areas of high unemployment have been getting their fair share of the uh, grants, contracts, and loans. All right. Maybe your staff could uh, uh, contact uh, members who are on the committee or other interested members, I would certainly be interested in seeing how that really layers sure. uh, in northern Ohio, which is extraordinarily hard hit. And that leads me to my next question, um, Secretary Perkari. Um, I understand that GAO September 23rd bimonthly report indicated a significant number of bids under the Recovery Act. Uh, that were funded have come in under estimate and that the Secretary is considering um, redirecting some of those dollars for economically distressed communities. My whole district is an economically distressed community. To your knowledge, have states uh, redirected significant funding to these distressed communities yet in uh, response to Secretary LaHood's letter? Uh, yes. The short answer is yes. We have been working directly with states, uh, asking them to redirect funds wherever possible to economically distressed areas. 
Uh, these EDAs make up about 33 percent of the population. I would point out that 57 percent of our highway funds and 60 percent of uh, all of our projects overall are in those economically distressed areas. We have some states that have devoted 90 percent of their highway funds to economically distressed areas. Uh, that's in part because we have been asking them from the beginning to really focus on that. Uh, and where uh, the bids have come in lower than engineers' estimate, which is uh, a number uh, of states, we have asked them to redirect the funding wherever possible to economically distressed areas. At what, uh, what is the next threshold for, you're saying, 22 percent or so of the dollars, a quarter of the dollars have been committed to date? When do we expect 50 percent of the dollars to be committed from the recovery bill? In any of, you know, across the government, is there a threshold for February 1st or? Uh, it, well, well, first, um, the, uh, we work on a reimbursable basis. So um, th we've obligated $31 billion of our $48.1 billion. But the way the transportation projects work, it's like buying a car. You don't pay Ford uh, when they're building it. You pay it when you buy it. And so we are reimbursing the states when the projects are completed uh, as a way to uh, be good stewards of uh, federal tax dollars. The, so the obligation is the best measure for us, and we're at uh, 31 of $48 billion right now. I know the, the time is limited, yeah, but Mr. Chairman, could you allow Mr. Dodaro to answer that yeah, question? Yeah, well? Congresswoman Kaptur, what we'll do, we'll go back and look at CBO's uh, estimated outlay schedule, but I think by the end of federal fiscal year 2010, it would be about halfway. But we'll go back and take a look, and I'll submit something for the record. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The gentleman from uh, Ohio, Mr. Turner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to thank each of our panelists for their efforts at assisting us in the issue of transparency uh, for this $787 billion stimulus package. I voted against this package, and I voted against it because I thought that there were no achievable standards in the, in the bill, there were no achievable goals, that it was ill-defined, that the spending was going to be misdirected, and that the deficits that were going to be generated would have a negative impact on our ability to create jobs. Lo and behold, the President is now saying that he's concerned that our deficits, created in part by this almost trillion-dollar stimulus package, might impact our ability to create jobs in the future. I appreciate the transparency that you're providing because we're able to take a look at whether or not this was ill-defined with no achievable goals, no achievable standards. We're actually able to look at how the money is spent and make a decision as to whether or not this should have been done and hopefully be able to make a decision whether or not in the future we should do something like this, which I think would be, be very unfortunate if we continued to try to spend in this manner where there's no accountability on the, the spending, it's not directed and targeted toward job creation and just generates additional deficits. Mr. Miller, you had said um, about the jobs created uh, on the education side. And um, I have two things I, I want to comment on that. One, we, we were reminded by the other side of the aisle that we should deal with facts. So let's, let's talk about some of those facts. Um, according to the Wall Street Journal and uh, Jonathan Carl of ABC News, they looked at the job creation figures on the side of education, and they found, for example, that Head Start in Augusta, Georgia, claimed 317 jobs were created by a $790,000 grant. In reality, Mr. Carl reports that the money went toward a one-off pay hike for 317 employees, not creating 317 jobs. And that would be in your numbers you report to us today. No, actually, Head Start's out of the Health and Human Services, out of HHS. It's not a Department of Education program. It's certainly out of the aggregate number of jobs that are created. And it's an example of the claim of a job created. Well, there isn't a job created. There were, in fact, pay hikes that were provided, according to Mr. Carl. My concern is in the education sector and in the government sector is that as these monies are used in this manner, which obviously the bill and the act permits, that we're creating a cliff then for these government agencies as we're providing a, a one-time subsidy for increased cost for their operation. When they go to that next year where the stimulus is not there, the gap is going to be greater between their revenue and their operational costs, creating perhaps a, an, a more difficult problem and one where they're going to turn to the federal government for additional assistance. In, in my community, in Dayton, Ohio, stimulus uh, dollars were used for the paving of Main Street. And my concern is that although in the transportation sector we created jobs uh, or jobs were assisted in, in that project moving forward, by the time that the project began to where it ended, there were probably less jobs along Main Street than were there before. 
This is not the type of spending that's going to create the type of sustainable jobs that we need in a certainly a state like Ohio that is struggling so much uh, and needing job production. Now, in looking at this issue of the phantom uh, congressional districts, according to the um, recovery.org site in my congressional district, uh, $186,371,562 were spent creating 385.4 jobs in my congressional district. Translates out to roughly about slightly, slightly less than $500,000 being, being spent uh, in, in trying to create a job. And then on the phantom districts, the, the number is the same. It claims that there were 11 jobs that were saved, over $5 million that were spent in phantom congressional districts, congressional districts that do not exist, translating to about $482,000 per job, not the type of investment that we want to, to continue. Now, what strikes me about the phantom congressional districts is that Ed Pound, the director of communications for the Obama administration's recoverment.org, said about this whole mess, who knows, man? Who really knows? That's his quote in the Wall Street Journal today. Mr. Devaney, I want to know if you disagree with Mr. Pound. Well I, cer well, I certainly wouldn't have said it that way. And I'll speak to him when I get back to the office. Um, the fact is that um, the, um, the, the, uh, the information may, in fact, be true about the jobs and the money spent. And the simple error has been the wrong congressional district. Um, and we think we can fix that next time out. But the accuracy of the data, uh, other than the congressional would that, district, would that include, in, excuse me, would that include the jobs in Augusta, Georgia, for the 317 jobs created, where apparently everyone just got a raise instead of real jobs being created? I, I don't know why the uh, recipient reported it that way, and it may have been the state of Georgia that reported it. Because as you've said to us, and, and I appreciate your honesty, you're merely reporting what these people have told you. There really is no transparency. We don't really know how they spent this money. And apparently that accountability didn't occur in the beginning of the, the approval of the receiving this money either. Uh, I appreciate what you're doing, but it doesn't give us the type of information to ever believe that jobs have been created or saved. Having said that, sir, uh, and I don't disagree with you, having, but, but at, at this point in time, the fact that we have transparency allows us to see these anomalies and to understand if they occurred or didn't. The old non-transparent way, which is the way the government has acted in the past, you never would have seen it. I agree with you, and I thank you for your efforts in that. Thank you, and the gentleman's time has expired. Um, we have a vote on the floor and that uh, we will return at 12.30. We have three votes, and uh, we will start again at 12.30. So uh, recess until 12.30. Mm -hmm.